Hey, this is Scott Darfy Bonsai. In this video, I'm going to go over an on-site backup solution and editing solution I put together. There are a lot of similar options like this. Of course, the NAR box is a big one. I've seen a lot of videos about lately. Good option. It is very compact. has a lot of features. Also, I'll link one in the description similar to my solution that you can check out. In my case, I'm using a phone that I had on hand, an LG X-Power phone. It has Android version 6 is a prepaid phone, which you can actually just go to a store and buy a prepaid phone. The negative there is that you will most likely not be able to update your Android operating system unless you hack it, because you would need a SIM card with service to potentially get updates if they are available. Now that's Android itself. It's not all of the updates that come through Google Play, which you will get those. Just something to keep in mind if you're going with a phone. You could also use a tablet or something similar. Nice thing about this phone is I had it, of course, has a large battery, 4,100 milliamp hours, micro SD card, it does have the headphone jack, I could potentially use that for something in the future as well. But the main feature is the USB OTG support, which makes a lot of this function. It's USB on the go, basically makes the phone a host USB device, so you can connect whatever you want to the phone and it'll probably work all right. The main thing that spurred making this was this little Insignia SD micro SD card reader for phones. I saw it at the store for $10 on sale, picked it up, and I found out the original phone I had planned on using didn't have the USB OTG support, but I was able to use this one so it worked out alright. Now you just simply connect that device to the phone. In this case, LG has a built-in file manager. But you can easily buy one or get a free one on the Android App Store if your phone doesn't have one. So you just connect it to the phone, hook up your card to the device, and then you can just copy over the files to internal storage or the micro SD card inside the phone. Pretty simple. As long as your phone is able to have a micro SD card, you can have pretty large storage. There are actually 400 gigabyte micro SD cards, I think even larger now. They are pretty pricey, but around 128 gigabytes is a pretty reasonable option at the moment. Of course, you can actually connect most cameras themselves directly to the phone and just copy over the images in that case, but I do like this external card reader. One thing to consider, this is USB 2, that means a maximum theoretical transfer rate of 60 megabytes per second. Now that's fast enough for me, but just keep that in mind when you are thinking about this solution. Besides the card reader, I picked up a few other cables. There's a straight pass-through cable to have a standard USB connection on one end, and then the connection to the phone on the other end. In that case, I can hook up a USB drive to the phone for external storage. So here I'm testing out a 64 gigabyte USB drive directly connected to the phone. I can copy over images or videos to that drive. Either way, it really doesn't matter. It works very nicely in that case. Now, of course, you can actually connect a hard drive to the phone for a lot of extra storage. A few things to keep in mind. One is the formatting of the drive. You will most likely have to change it to something like EXFAT or a Linux variant of a file system. Now on Windows, I was able to convert my drive pretty easily. I just didn't have anything on it, so I reformatted it to EXFAT, and that gave me the ability for Android to read that hard drive. Another thing to keep in mind with the hard drives is power. In this case, the smaller external hard drives pull power from the USB. Now this LG X-Power phone is capable of pushing enough power to the drive to power it, but I decided to buy a cable that splits the power and the data connections. That way the drive itself will be powered by something else, either a large battery or directly to AAC power with a USB charger. Just make sure the amps are high enough to power the hard drive continuously. Connecting the hard drive with that split cable is a little quirky. I have to actually connect the drive to the phone first, and it's being powered by the phone, but then I can connect either a battery pack or the AC power with that second lead on that cable. Now at that point, the power is going from either the battery or the AC power to the hard drive. I can actually disconnect the phone at that point and you can see the hard drive is still running. So it works all right. I was able to copy images to the hard drive and back. Just keep in mind with the hard drive, it might be a little difficult to get things running, but once you do, it should work just fine. 
So with this phone, I decided to pick up a nice solid case for it. This case was surprisingly inexpensive, very solid, nice and thick plastic, especially on the back and the sides. I also have a screen protector, in this case a matte finish to make it easier to see in different lighting conditions. And the ports have covers, which is a nice little extra benefit. I decided to put some Velcro on the back of the case and the SD card reader so those can be permanently connected together so I won't lose the card reader very easily. The nice thing about using a straight Android device is the app situation. You can have apps to edit the images directly through the phone. You can output to different devices with the screens, uh, something like a Chromecast can actually connect printers to it, do a little test here with my black and white printer, see if it works. So many different options with the Android device. Then you have a few little extra benefits like the flashlight integrated into the phone. And then you can connect your cameras to that device instead of your personal phone. So if you want to do wireless control, it's all built into your backup and editing device for on-site use. I did try this device out at my local state park. Worked very nicely. Just pulled it out at the ends of the day, copied over all of the images and videos to the device very easily. My new backup device. Let's make sure it's on. It's good. So, come on, simple as one, pop out the Fujifilm memory card, got connected, let's just copy this entire folder to the SD card. Let's put it in here. So we have 75 images. I accidentally did some JPEGs, but you get the idea. So I'm not going to wait until this is done. But I can leave this running for however long it's going to take. Easy enough. Of course, it's not super quick, but it's fast enough. By the time that I had put all of my stuff back in my bag, it was almost finished. Using a device like this is really up to your imagination. There's so many options, so many things that you could potentially do with something like this. Using Android means you have a huge app store of different photography related apps to use. And then you've got the simple case of backing up things to the device and pushing images to other backup devices. So it is very versatile. It's really not extremely portable, but if you just bring the phone, you don't need the other stuff to bring along with you and easily put it in a pocket. So I think it's going to work pretty well for me in this case. Big negative here is this specific phone is locked to a prepaid carrier so I won't be able to get Android updates in the future if they do come out because I don't use that carrier anymore. But besides that, really nice little device. I think it's going to work out well. If you found this interesting, I'm Scott from Photography Bonsai. Thanks. If you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing. That does really help me out these days, especially with how YouTube has changed their partner program. That said, I appreciate you watching my content, liking, and sharing it. Thanks again.